grateful for being here this morning. Coming here and doing this helps me uh, pay attention to what I'm doing in this lifetime. So, um, my story today is about relationships. Um, relationships, uh, the great Buddha apparently said, are the most difficult spiritual path. And one of my own teachers a long time ago said to me that uh, my inclination to be by myself back in the woods is uh, not where it's at this lifetime. This lifetime is to learn to be with people. And so a lot of this lifetime has been on relationships. And I've been able to learn a lot from people that knew a lot. So what I'm discovering recently, my relationship with my body and my relationship with the great mystery, creator, my relationship with food, my relationship with my sweetie, and my dog. <laughs> have some uh, parallel lines. It seems that the parallel lines are based in connection. The more connection I have with my dog, uh, the weather, creator, the better I feel in here. Um, it doesn't have much to do with logic or doing the right thing or having the right philosophy. Right now it seems to be about connection. The more connected I feel, the better I feel. So uh, I have a story. A lot of this medicine, this is called stalking, is a medicine way. It's a way that indigenous people meet the world because the world seems to be chaos. And stalking brings order to the chaos. And I do understand the term stalking has some negative connotations. However, about 1,500 years ago, right here, on Turtle Island, people that were into stalking themselves were considered to be in a very high spiritual endeavor. Not that they were high spiritually, but they were working to get there. So stalking ourselves is like this. We look for those things we tend to avoid. We experience those things that are uncomfortable. So this is a story about stalking. Stalking stories have several levels. One of my teachers said it's like an onion. You peel one layer and there's more and there's more and there's more. So the first layer, level of the story is about <coughs> relationship between <coughs> mother and daughter. Mother and daughter. The second level is daughter is like 40 years old and she would like this with mom. Mm -hmm. uh, Mom would prefer this. <laughs> so that's another level of the story. So the daughter visits mom at the family ranch, and mom's complaining about her health, her sleep, her feeling of uh, overwhelmed and ungrounded. And, and this is not new. Mom's talked about it like this for years, and daughter's heard this for years. And daughter's in the helping profession. So. <laughs> She walks right into it. Uh, <laughs> mom starts complaining and daughter starts wanting to help. And then she recognizes this feeling of frustration and anger. And so they're talking about food, because in this family, food has been a big issue. Some people eat too much, some people don't eat enough, and some people eat stuff that I wouldn't feed to my dog. So there's a lot of stuff about food that's very old in this family. And this daughter has difficulty gaining weight. Uh, she says she just doesn't feel hungry. So she has trouble with some things that are goals, her uh, physical goals, to work out more, to ride her bike more, to do certain things. She doesn't have enough energy. And this has been a, a constant state for a few years. So mom and daughter are talking about how mom feels, and mom's got a bag of Lay's potato chips, and he's eating those. And daughter says, well, what's for dinner? Mom said, this is going to be my dinner. <laughs> so daughter gets pissed. I mean, she gets hot right there. You're not taking care of yourself. You're not eating well. You're not eating any protein or anything green. You can't have potato chips for dinner and then go to bed. And of course, mom says, yes, I can. <laughs> I'm the mom here. And daughter says, you're acting like, you know, anyway. 
you can probably figure out the rest of the conversation. So the daughter comes to see me, and we're talking about mom. And the daughter said, I am just so pissed off at her, I can't see straight. I said, tell me what you're angry about. All right, simple version, she does not eat enough protein. And it's obvious anybody that does not eat enough protein is going to have difficulties with endurance, with feeling good. It's just part of the story. Fats, carbohydrates, protein. My mom ate potato chips for dinner and she had french fries for breakfast. That woman drives me bonkers. There's no protein anywhere. So in the stalking medicine, what we do is we look for what we react to. And we cover all four dimensions with any luck. The first is the physical. So the lady and I are talking about, tell me what's going on with you physically. I am very contracted. I am very tight. My jaw is tight. My shoulders are tight. My breathing is terrible. Every time I picture mom over there in that chair, uh, I contract. She's doing this to me. I said, wait a minute. Mom's not here. The chair is empty. You're doing this to me. Uh, she didn't like that too much, but that's what we call awareness and responsibility. I'm aware that my body has contracted, and I'm responsible for that. Mom didn't do that. I did that in reaction to mom. People don't piss me off. They do something, and I judge it, and my judgment creates my anger. Thoughts create emotions. Emotions create feelings in the body. Short course in holistic medicine. Right there. So. Thoughts create emotions. Somebody does something, I get angry. I get angry because I judge. You're doing it wrong, and I know what's right. So my judgments also turn me into my self-importance, where I know how other people should behave. And so because I'm a stalker, sometimes I watch the news so I can find my self-importance. <laughs> it doesn't take very long. Uh, sometimes I watch politics so I can find my self-importance. Uh, my judgment, my blame, my criticism, my self-importance. Because when my thoughts are in that frequency, my body is in hell. So, and I'm responsible for that. So the first two legs of stalking medicine are awareness and responsibility. The lady, the daughter was contracted and she was aware she was judging mom. So to keep it simple, we said, tell me what you're judging. All right, a simple thing. She won't eat enough protein. So, okay. So she puts mom in a chair, and she's looking at her, and she's just really angry. She said, you won't eat enough protein. So when she was really upset, I asked her to switch chairs. And she sat in the mom chair and said, no, I don't eat enough protein. I don't. That's true. And then the lady started crying. I said, hey, tell me what's going on. She said, I don't need enough protein. She said, I haven't felt strong or healthy in a long time. I don't need enough protein. So the next day, she's a Capricorn person. So she's into planning, organizing, and getting this right. So she goes down to the store, she gets a little uh, a thing to measure food, ounces, and she looks it up and she's got as fresh cooked chicken, and she's tearing it apart, and she's throwing it in this thing, and that's six ounces. I'm supposed to have six ounces of protein at every meal. And she said, I've never eaten anything close to half of that, ever. So she said, this time I'm gonna own it. What I see in the mirror is somebody is doing wrong. I'm gonna own that as a mirror, a spiritual mirror. She's not eating enough protein. By goodness, I don't eat enough protein. And I'm going to take care of that and shut my mouth to her. How about that? That's stalking. I have a complaint about you. I take care of it with me. And I don't speak that to you because it's not you. You're a spiritual being holding up a mirror for me. That's how this stalking works. And some people don't like that. I hated the idea that Donald Trump was a mirror for me. <laughs> Still working on it. <laughs> Thank you, Don. <laughs> but to be truthful, I've done this with every president ever since I started paying attention to politics. My judge does not let anybody off the hook. None of them do it right, and I know how to do it right. Okay? 
There is my self-importance. It's aligned with my judgment. So this lady decided that her spirit was trying to show her something. And this amazing thing happened. When she started eating six grams of protein three times a day, something woke up in her. Literally, something changed in her body. Her energy went up. Her enthusiasm went up. Her serotonin went up. She wanted to start working out, riding the bike again. So it looks like her body, from not having enough protein over a long period of time, has kind of settled for that and went into sort of a dormancy. So she added this extra food and she said it was like waking up from a bad dream. Whole trip changed. So now she's doing six ounces of protein three times a day, sometimes four. She's meeting her goals physically and she's looking at her mama as her spiritual teacher. Now that's a trip. Instead of you're a pain in the butt, you're my spiritual teacher. You showed me something. Is really important for me. Now in stalking, we have this idea at another level. Because that was physical, right? But it also covered the emotion. She was upset. It covered the mental. Her mind was full of judgment and self-importance. And then she hit the spiritual. Mama held up a mirror for something I might want to look at. So stalking says, any time I react to somebody with judgment, blame, criticism, anger, frustration, and results, spirits over there holding up a mirror. And I have a choice. I can say they're the problem. If they would change, I would be happier. You all may have said that, but probably not. You probably never said that. <laughs> If you change, I'll be happier. If Donald Trump was different, I'd be happier. You know what they call that, right? <laughs> Elephant cock. <laughs> so, Mama didn't have to change for her to be happy. She opened her heart to her mother. She understood her mother gave her a great gift that she had not been able to figure out for years until she accepted the mirror. I'm so pissed off at her, she's holding up a mirror. So that's stalking medicine. It has to do with the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Stalking medicine is designed by indigenous people about eight to 10,000 years ago, according to them. I don't know if that's true. But what it's looking for all the time is in this world of chaos, what is my spiritual connection to people and what's going on? My spiritual connection is not finding what's wrong and thinking I can make it right. And it's also not being passive and letting anything happen. It's to be patient without being passive. So, stalking helped this lady find something that was really important to her physically. I don't know if you're familiar with the work by Carlos Castaneda, he worked with Don Juan Matus, a Yaki sorcerer, for about 15 to 18 years. And Don Juan said the same thing in another dimension. Don Juan told Carlos repeatedly that if you look at the world as a mirror and you're willing to accept that as part of you instead of separate from you, that adds something to you. It begins to complete you as a human you begin to find your true self. You begin to find freedom. Then you understand spirit brings these people to push your butt, not because it's bad karma or you were bad in another lifetime, but because there's stuff in here you might want to look at, just like more protein. And Don Juan told Carlos this miraculous thing, that when we decide to look at the world as a mirror, a gift, an opportunity, especially with those things we react to, we begin to open up a part of us 
all our silent knowledge that lives right here, where we know. We don't need to be told. We don't need to ask. We know. I'm pretty certain that everybody in here has had at least one experience with their silent knowledge. Some people call it intuition, whatever. Apparently, that can be cultivated, not by wanting it, but by looking the world as a mirror and accepting the gifts that Spirit sends to me. Here it is. Donald Trump has been a great gift to me. God, I almost choked. Hey. <laughs> but it's true, God, wherever you are. Your arrogance, your self-importance, your name-calling, your self-pity. I can find all of those things in me without looking too far. An amazing thing, Don, wherever you are, Probably at McDonald's. <laughs> There's one of my judgments right there. Yeah, you mean at McDonald's, fool? Right. So, Don, you brought up my judgment again. Thank you. Right here in front of these people. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> He's calling. I swear I turned it off. <laughs> Who were you going to turn off? <laughs> So, using the world as a way to find a spiritual connection in everything. And to be clear, I'm sure it's obvious to you, the mirror works both ways. That stuff I see in Jesus, that's me. He's holding up the mirror. I think he even said that. Whatever I do, y'all can do more than you will. He probably didn't say you all. <laughs> this is your South Palestine. <laughs> Anyway, so the stuff I see that I react to, either with a closed heart or an open heart, doesn't make any difference for stalking. It all has an equal balance, equal value. So stalkers are on a spiritual endeavor. They're looking for what we react to. We wake up a little bit. We realize that what we react to is a gift from spirit. So uh, honestly, when I look at my own self-importance, my self-pity, my fear, my judgment, my blame, my criticism. And I find those things within me, those energies, and I breathe into them. The big gift for me is my anger at Donald Trump goes away. I'm not upset anymore. And that's all I really care about. Because obviously, Creator made Donald too. There isn't anything in the world of creation that's not created by our Creator. That's a premise of stalking. The other premise of stalking is it's all spiritual. The lower energies are to move us to the spiritual. My anger is to help me to move up. My judgment helps me move up. So sometimes people say, well, I've got to get rid of my judgment. My goodness, no. No. How about if we look for our judgment? How about if we look for what we judge? How about if we decide that's a mirror? That person showed up holding up a mirror. Matter of fact, Spirit sent them to help me. Consider that possibility. Basically, it feels a lot better than wanting everybody to be different. Finally, at this point, it seems clearer. The only time I am ever upset is when I want people of the world to be different. That's it. Sometimes I stub my toe. It's the same thing. Whoever left that in a way for me to stub my toe, and we know who that was. <laughs> it's a quick circle. So that's stalking. It's called the medicine way, because we understand now from neurobiology and neuroplasticity that at the moment I accept that's a mirror, and that's a part of me. My neuroplasticity opens up again. Incredible. At the moment my thoughts are in judgment, you're a fool, my neuroplasticity stops. Incredible. My brain capacity changes. Whether my thoughts are critical, judgmental, and blaming, or open and accepting. Neuroplasticity, the ability to have new thoughts and learn all the way up to the moment of death comes from 
letting go of judgment, and letting go of judgment comes from stalking how much I do it and being responsible for it. So stalkers have two legs, awareness and responsibility. We try to do this stuff through our body because our mind lies. One of my favorite uh, person to work with was a psychiatrist. His doctor sent him because he had a new walnut ulcer, uh, that's a small intestine. And for us, a new walnut ulcer is this inside. So he comes in, he sits down in his chair in my office, a really nice chair, and he says, my doctor sent me here. I want you to know I have a bleeding ulcer, but I am not upset. <laughs> <laughs> so our first challenge was to get him to the place of accepting that your body has a message for him. And this was really simple stuff. I said to him, tell me when your ulcer is the worst. Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'm thinking, maybe he goes to the gym, whatever. He said, Tuesdays and Thursdays, these two old ladies come in. And man, I'm just thinking about them. My ulcer is reacting right now. So I said, duh. Tell me about these old ladies. They remind me of my mother. So you have some unfinished business with your mother. This is related to your ulcer. And I'm wondering about the treatment these old ladies are getting. <laughs> and question so anyway, we explore his physical reaction to his mother. We find his judgment, his blame, his criticism, and his self-pity. Oh, poor me, my mother should have been different. The storm brought the baby to the wrong house. <laughs> you know what they call it, right? That's elephant cockroach. <laughs> So, as we got through this, he began to take responsibility, awareness and responsibility, that he's contracting his body. Those old ladies were not doing that. They're just being who they are. Then we began to move into the other two parts, relentlessness and impeccability. So that's not cultivated in our culture. For stalkers, it's really important. I am relentless is looking at what I judge, when I blame, when I'm upset. I am impeccable with this as much as I can be. When I see what I react to, to own that as a mirror. Awareness and responsibility, relentlessness and impeccability. These things are not much cultivated in our culture. You may notice. We happen to be in a victim culture. Don't talk like that, you hurt my feelings. Don't use that word, I might be upset. Don't dance like that, I'm offended. Don't vote like that. Lord, none of them don't get that tattoo. Don't do that stuff. I might be offended. And you should be different so I won't be offended. Well, for stalkers, that's a great joke. Good luck with that. That has never been true since the beginning of the world. Probably not going to happen. I'm not going to dance the way you want me to so you won't be upset. If you get upset, you're responsible for that. I could be compassionate. I could say, I'm sorry you're upset, but that's as far as it goes. I'm still going to dance the way I want to dance. You don't like it, don't look. That's how simple that stuff is. So stalking is a little bit like push-ups. It's very simple. It is not easy. Push-ups are simple, right? You don't need a coach, you don't need a DVD, you don't need to go to the gym. It's not easy. So this medicine way is not easy. It is a lot of fun. Because I realize spirits got my back here. If I have something I'm finished, Spirit's going to help me out. I was with uh, a group of people the other day, and uh, a lady came in that reminded me a great deal of my first marriage. And, uh, and that, was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, my math is still pretty good. Uh, and I realized, looking at her, watching this lady, who was not my former spouse. Mm. But she had some mannerisms that were very similar. And I realized that I'm reacting. I'm comparing this lady to my former spouse, and not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. So spirits sent that lady. So when I got home that night, I sat at the chair in the living room, I put my former spouse there, and I said, Kathy, it's me again. <laughs> again. So I have some unfinished business with you. And 
So I began to play the role of Kathy, and the first response playing the role of my former spouse was, good, <laughs> good. You upset me so much, I hope you're upset. <laughs> so with my former spouse, I found my judge again. One more time. My judge had some hidden judgments about how I ended that marriage. That lady showed up and to help me find those judgments so I could move for religious peace. So that's how it works. It's fairly simple, it's not easy. Some people don't like it at all. They don't like awareness and responsibility. They want the world to change so they can be happy. So that's, that's kind of not what this is. So I thank you all for this opportunity. And it's good to come here and talk about this stuff. Uh, thank you, Hal, for your words of wisdom and wit and inspiration. We really appreciate that. Let's take a few moments to allow the words and wisdom swirling through the spirit to be heard with the ears of our hearts and sink into the fullness of our beings. With your eyes open or closed, just breathe. Just breathe naturally. Focus on your head, your face, your jaw, mouth, eyes, eyebrows, face of your neck, up the back of your head, and purposely let each of these areas relax. Imagine a firm, yet gentle and comforting weight on both shoulders. It could be the weight of the hands of the person who loves you the most, or simply the force of gravity. You may drop your arms next to you on either side of the chair. This may help. And allow your shoulders to be pushed down deeper which stretches your neck and the back of your head and hold it for a few seconds. And now relax. Try that again. Feel the stretch of your shoulders. Hold and fully relax. And breathe. I invite you to take a few moments to open yourself to the awareness that there are many guides, many teachers, and many ways of learning on the good red road, of learning from our challenges, our seeming enemies. Perhaps there were some specific words or phrases that came through Hal this morning that spoke to your heart, to your experiences to your dreams, or your challenges. Perhaps there are simply seeds planted in your consciousness that will come to fruition in ways that you can't begin to imagine right now. As we sink into the silence alone and together, let us open to the awareness of the good red road, calling us forward, onward, and more each in our own way. And remember that you are not the only one to benefit from this time this way of learning, this way of knowing. Open to the awareness that there are other loved ones and strangers alike, blessed by your willingness to learn and grow, to face and embrace your shadows, 
as well as your blessings and the many lessons that come your way. And let's take time to send conscious blessings to another person, persons, or situation by sending forth your love, your light, your prayer, your affirmation for the highest good of all. to do this. And so it is.